I'll try to make this short and sweet. Um, Mr. Rightway just put out a nice PS3 video highlighting some titles that people need to go out and buy. Good work, Mr. Rightway. Appreciate that. Let them know. Get them panicky. Give them that FOMO. That fear of missing out, not destiny. What's my point today? What's the what's the idea? Um, just consider this. Is the market way up right now because of COVID? <clears throat> because of the stimulus money that went, went around combined with people stuck at home, they need systems and games to be entertained. Is PS3 way up also just in the past week because of all this talk about PS3 and PS4, digital games going away? Has people talking about PS3? Go buy the digital games. Go go out now. Go run out now. Buy PS3. Run out now. PS3. Does that have an effect? I say yes to all these things. Yes. Slightly. Um, but imagine this. Imagine you're a greedy value-based collector, which is the same thing as an investor, reseller really is. When collectors are making decisions to buy or trade for completely based on value not based on how much they want to play the game when they're selling or trading things away because it seems too hot to be true it's not going to sustain that value so they always purge it try to scoop it up later if they want it in their collection when it drops in price again value based that's what resellers do so the resellers in disguise these collectors um which is not fine that's not cool tactical but you don't you don't get the respect of whales out there that can see right through you um, but consider this when all these reasons point to why something's expensive now imagine when those reasons are pre-existing but something is cheap imagine what you can do as an investor you can go in and clear out all the copies on eBay and Amazon and with those reasons floating that becomes the reason as to why it's expensive it has nothing to do with you the investor the tactical magician that's gonna be flipping this stuff for four times what you paid for it they don't know about you you don't exist you were you were in the shadows you're a ghost but you pick something that had a whole lot of reason to be more expensive. You cleared it out. You're greedy. You want money. You clear it out. This is what I do, by the way. And then people believe that it rose organically, naturally. Supply and demand brought it up. Makes sense, man. 3D Dot is Atlas, Zelda clone. FromSoft looks great. I want to play it. COVID, stimulus money, PlayStation 3 digital shop. Pat and Ian, all these talking heads, talking PS3 right now. All makes sense. I believe it. I'll cave. It's a $90 game. Oh, one popped up for 70 Ah, FOMO. I should jump on that. I should buy it. That's funny. To me, it's funny because... Holy shit, was that easy to scoop up for under $20 a year ago. So that's what investors do. That's what a lot of talking heads do. That's what a lot of YouTubers do. A lot of these guys, probably guys like Mr. Brightway, guys like Radical Reggie, before they suggest titles, uh, they've, they've, they've scooped a few. They know better. You'll see these guys at conventions all the time too, wheeling and dealing. They've got stuff. They know what they're doing. One example, one story I have. Personal testimonial about Pat the NES Punk of all people. You would think he wouldn't be getting into this kind of grimy behavior. And this was a long time ago. This was 2016 that I encountered him at Retropalooza. He took interest in my Zelda test cart. He said it was fake. He's full of shit. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um... Pat had multiple copies of Schoon 
on NES, one of four IRAM games in North America. Published by IRAM, is also made by IRAM. Scoon! That was one of Pat's favorite games going way back in time. He used to always talk about how Scoon is so hard to find. And it's good! And he's showing gameplay, he's explained how the game is played because it's one of those games that doesn't make any sense. Try playing it, you're like, what the fuck's going on? I gotta pick up these. I'll spare you the fucking Scoon, how Scoon is played. But Pat had to like show it, like, yeah, yeah see? See, how it's fun. Eh. Scoon. Really hard to find. Let me, let me add it in my book as a rarity. Let me, let me rank the rarity. I'm gonna rank it up. He has multiple fucking copies of that game. That's what I noticed. He had a CIB and he had several carts to trade out at Retro Palooza. So, that's what they do. That's what I do. That's what I suggest other people do. And here's, here's, if you need any kind of moral justification here, it's, and you'll feel it if you've been in this for a long time, in the game market, been a collector for a long time. It's when, I'll use Sega Saturn as, a, as an example. It's when, when you first began, all your heavies were in this 50 to $80 range. And five, six, seven years later, it's all 200, 250, 300. And it's all because of organic demand increasing. More people became collectors. More people got into Saturn. Not enough of this stuff to go around. Starts to starts to get spicy in price. So you end up getting sharp about what kinds of titles do this. What are the makings of a title that's going to organically increase in value over time. And now we're to a point where so many people are sharp about it that... A title can have the makings of a very valuable game in the future and it's going to jump there it's going to jump to that saturation point of supply and demand because it's a truly hard to find title let me let me pick one one i like gunblade new york slash la machine guns on the wii very low print and this is another factor you start start thinking about is like they're going to reprint it it's like probably not Probably not at this point on the Wii. Probably not going to get a reprint on the Wii. They're going to bring it to the Switch? They could. Super unlikely. If they did, would it destroy the Wii's value? Probably not. So that's my little hypothetical. Just that little example there. Um, so when that game's like 30 bucks and there's 20 of them sitting on eBay, you can go clear it out and it's going to teleport to like 60 bucks. Like suddenly somebody's gonna try getting 50, 60. Shit, you could be the guy that pulls the trigger on it. Buy it! I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna make my byline 70 on it. Every copy of that gets listed below. It's a gutsy call. It's gonna, it's gonna sink you a little bit. You're gonna have to have some deep pockets to, to do this. But eventually it just sets in and you can let go of it. And then outsiders, your collectors, are gonna want that game. If it has all the right makings, right? And they're going to see that the cheapest copies are all 70, 80, 90 bucks. They're going to cave or they're going to see an opportunity to get one for 60, 50 and feel like they're getting a smoking deal. Meanwhile, you've got a stack of 40 of them. Your average investment was 30 a pop. Super easy money. Super easy. So a lot of people are doing that. That's what I've been doing for a few years now. It's not, it's not COVID. It's... These are all these are all factors that the masses will just they need a reason as to why stuff blew up on them. And so they just accept that that's the reason. Really those are all factors, but it was resellers that were feeling the reason why this game should be more expensive, could be more expensive. They indulge, they invest. And then it just teleports and they have juicy profit margins to make on all their stuff. So, what's the big takeaway? Like, how do we identify these titles, you know? 
How do we identify a 15 right now that has the potential to stick at 50 and organically stay there where you can just let go and not have to shill on it, not have to shill bid, not have to do any of that. It's going to organically stick because you called the right shot. You called a title that was on its way to 70 bucks. It's going to take 10 years, but you sped up the process. How do you do that? That's well, just analyzing those attributes, analyzing the things that collectors go. That's why. Oh, it's because it's Atlas. Well, we know Atlas, you know, it's Atlas. Rule of Rose, Way of the Samurai, not Way of the Samurai, it's, uh, Samurai Western, Persona, Crusader of Senti, every single PS1 game, <laughs> you know? So they say that's why. So if it's a $10 Atlas game exclusive to a system, it doesn't even matter if it's good or not. Consider buying it up. Collectors are going to fucking get tricked. Trick collectors. That's the reseller way. Sounds fucking evil, doesn't it? But that's what's going on. That's what I do. Why would I uh, admit that um, I'm unethical? I don't know. Because I, I feel I sense so many other people doing it, but they do it in the shadows and they don't admit that they're doing it. So, just want to get that concept out there so that y'all can be sharper. Anyways, just feeling that topic today.